Islamic extremists chop off the hand of an ex-Muslim Christian convert. Uh, Islamic extremists attack a man from the Mamu village in the Luka district of Uganda on July 26th. 42-year-old Musa John uh, Kasada, a father of six, converted to Christianity in an outdoor service on June 17th. His wife and children also converted in the ceremony, and the family began attending church. After the third week of neglecting to turn up to his former mosque's Friday prayers, Kasada's brother sent Musa's new pastor a threatening message. Quote, it has come to our attention that Musa, Kasada, and the family are attending your church. This should stop immediately. Otherwise, your church is at risk, the message read. The pastor took the threat seriously and arranged for the family to seek refuge with a local official. On July 26th, the family's whereabouts were discovered. Musa and his family were already traveling to a new safe house when four extremists caught up to him. Quote, they started beating my husband and they got a hold of me and tied me up. They forced me to sing Christian songs as they began chopping off my husband's hand, Musa's wife, Asiya uh, Naigaga, stated. The family was saved by a group of sugarcane workers who happened to be passing by in a truck. As of the writing of this article, no charges have been filed. Wait, they, f they forced her to sing Christian songs while she was watching her husband's hands being chopped off? Yes, according to her reports. What the hell is this? This is like a, a script of a movie that is trying too hard to make people look evil. You know, this is real life. I have no words. Do you have any words? It's crazy. What's really interesting is that Uganda is a must Christian, Christian majority country. And that according to official polls, there is only 14% Muslims. But according to some Muslim leaders, they say that their numbers are up to 25%. And basically... Do you remember a few weeks ago we covered a story about this giant massacre that happened against Christians in parts of Uganda? And they were part of a group called the ADF, which has aligned with ISIS, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I vaguely remember. So there are some reports that the people who did this are aligned with the ADF, which is actually... Wait, the no, the, the massacre that happened occurred in a country next to Uganda, but the ADF started as a group trying to overthrow the Ugandan government and then they got forced out of Uganda. So now they're like kind of in these like border areas. And so ever since there's been this up this surge in this ADF militia group, it's apparently radicalized a lot of the Muslim community. And to the point that the Christian majority has been asking for state protections because of how, thank you, Dee, she reminded me where it happened. It was in the, the Congo, the DRC. Um, this is why Dee is the best. Um, Armin concurs. <laughs> um, so this actually did happen in, in Uganda this time. And uh, yeah, apparently this group has just like radicalized people insanely and there are people being targeted like this all the time. And I thought it was really important to cover because a lot of times in ex-Muslim movements, like we only highlight what happens to ex-Muslim atheists, but ex-Muslim Christians face the same levels of persecution. Um, and this is That's like same. horrific. But honestly, mm -hmm. this is against like the Sharia. Um, yeah, the Sharia is actually worse. He's ex-Muslim. Yeah. So he should have. How do I say this without YouTube thinking I'm advocating for this? A Islamic law prescribes some some his neck being chopped, not his hands. But wait, wait, what? What was his hand? Why did he? Why did they chop off his hand? For leaving Islam. Yeah, I mean. And his whole family left too. And they all had to witness their father be mutilated. Okay. I mean, this is, he didn't steal. Chopping of hands is for when you steal something in Islam. 
chopping of the head is for when you leave Islam. Yes. So he kind of got lucky, I guess. I don't know. In some ways. Rel relatively. But really, this is like an act of terrorism against the whole community. Yes, you're right. He's a constant reminder. He's just exactly. walking around like, with this that This is going to happen to you if you step out of line. So you better be showing up to your Friday prayers. Other we're, otherwise, we're going to notice. They were... Um, like the where so when they were trying to go to a different safe house, they had been previously staying at like a government official's home. Like they were straight up on the run. It's so scary. And like I said, no one as of what I've read so far, no one's been arrested, no one's been ascertained, no one's been charged. Okay, so Yod's in the live chat saying, wait, let me rephrase that. Even I don't think Muhammad could have come up with something like this during his lifetime. I mean I don't know how much of the Sira do you associate. According to the Sira, uh, Muhammad lit a fire on someone else's chest just so that he could find the treasure. So, oh yeah, and they also, he also put hot rods in the eyes of people who stole some sheep. God, so, damn. Yeah, so I don't know if what you're saying is not true, actually. Muhammad did come up with uh, stuff like that. Um, wait, hold on. Somebody else was saying something. Uh, do you want to respond to this? Shriyash is saying, do you guys ever lose some innocence that you didn't know you had while streaming? Um, honestly, I think that left me a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Not anymore. I, I don't even, I don't, honestly, I don't even think that happened to me because of covering tough topics. I think that happened to me because of the sheer amount of abuse I experienced because of Hindutva. Like, that changed the way I interact with people forever. I'm not even kidding. Okay, so... Troll saying maybe a pun on early retirement, like Islamic law mandates to early expiration of a post -it. I mean, to be honest, guys, um, most of these radicals... Like, a lot of people think, like, radicals are expert in Islam. No. I bet you these people have no uh, idea. Like, I bet you um, most of us here are more f familiar no no not most of us but a lot of us here are more familiar with islamic laws than a lot of these radicals okay um i think their leaders are pretty up to date with what's islamic law but i i don't i think they're random foot soldiers they have no idea they have no idea like they don't even know what's in the quran let alone what's fiqh or in the hadith or in the sirah no they just probably believe in the supremacy of islam yeah just, and the supremacy of Muslims over non-Muslims. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and their Islam, right and their right to establish Islam as the dominant and superior religion upon above all others and at the expense of others. I don't know. Okay, I thought it was really important to highlight this news just because, like, even though you know technically there are things about this that go against Islam, blah blah blah, it's still important to talk about just the sheer acts of violence that people do for the sake of propagating Islam or enforcing it and policing the community. Even if technically the way they go about it is against its own teachings. Do you think that's like a fair assessment? Like that Islam is ultimately, you say that again? Basically, I think it's important to cover this news that while we can point out, well, technically this is Islamic and technically this goes against the Sharia and blah, blah, blah. Like we can point out those things, but oh. ultimately it's important to highlight the fact that this is what the extent that people will go to to enforce of course. it upon other people. Okay, this is still Islam. Okay, so even when things are not accord completely according to the book, okay, it's still Islamic, okay? For example, the fact that priests um abuse children okay it's a very christian thing even though there's it's nowhere in the bible okay it's nowhere in the bible that you get to do this to kids okay but it's a very christian thing christianity has has made that possible christianity indirectly is responsible for that in multiple ways which we have discussed many times on this channel okay so just because it's not in the bible it doesn't mean it's not a christian thing it is a christian thing okay so a lot of things Islam is responsible for, but not so directly like, oh, here's the text. Here's a direct commandment for it in the Quran or in the Hadiths. 
Islam has created the conditions where those things happen more often, even if you can't find one on one example of that in the text. Yeah, so, yeah he put it very Islam. well. She said, even his own family was hunting him. This is the extent what? of the love of the prophet. Oh my God. Insane. Mm -hmm. These people, they, I don't know how people knowing this thing is possible. Living in Uganda, you would leave Islam. Like these people have must love Jesus so much that they're like, oh yeah, let's just go through this, even though we know that the consequences could be. It's terrifying. I have to say, I, I blame Christianity as well. These people are like sacri like are sacrificing so much for something that is fake. I don't think that's fair because if this happened to an atheist, we wouldn't blame atheism. They should have the freedom to do whatever they want with their own personal choices. Yeah, I didn't say they don't have. Okay, there's two different things. Okay, I didn't say they. If someone have said, "Oh my God, I'm blaming atheism because they became an ex, an ex-Muslim atheist," like because they would love that so much over despite the risks, that's ridiculous. No, no, no. That it wouldn't apply to atheism. Okay, because atheism is the right conclusion. Okay, I'm saying they're suffering this much for something that is fake. So it's not even, it's not like they're suffering and it's not even in the right for, for something that is worthy. Mm. That's what I'm saying. And again, I acknowledge the fact that they have the right to do it. I'm just thinking it's unfortunate that they're this much, they're going through all this crap and it's for the sake of another myth. Like they're not even, they're suffering for something that is worthless, which is Christianity. Mm -hmm. I was reading about some attacks that happened on Christians in a similar region in Uganda a few years ago, and they were being attacked because they were blaspheming the Prophet Muhammad somehow. And their their blasphemy, quote unquote blasphemy, was because they were saying Jesus was the Son of God. Just like the baseline Christian belief. And that's wow. no blasphemy against Islam. I mean, technically it is blasphemy against Islam. So. I, um, I think, yeah. So absurd. God damn it. Levels of indoctrination, man. Mm. Okay, I, I'm starting a comment. I'm not going to highlight it unless you want to. <laughs> Do you want to highlight that? <laughs> this is funny. SB is asking, what does it take to date Susanna asking for academic research? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good line. That's good. That's good. Good job. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to answer this. <laughs> usually, usually, uh, women don't know the answer. You have to discover that yourself. <laughs> well, as a, if you're a man, as a baseline, you have to be at, le at least like ten to fifteen older than, than me on average. So that's one. We can figure mm -hmm. out the rest of the criteria later. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.